Coming up in today's video, I show you how I paint my 20mm AB Figures SAS Trooper. The technique shown in this video is super easy to accomplish and involves very little in the way of paints. If you're a fan of the SAS and want some cool figures, definitely check out AB Figures range. Let me know below what you thought of this tutorial and if you'll be grabbing some of these SAS miniatures. Alright guys, so this is something I've been wanting to do for a while now. I watched SAS Grog Heroes whilst I had COVID and I was like, I must do this. I'll grab my set of AB figures, sort of SAS looking chaps and um, I'm going to paint them for like the desert. Even though they're wearing long sleeve shirts and trousers etc. doesn't really matter to me. I want to go full SAS Grog Heroes on these guys. The SAS. Who are the SAS? You are the SAS, the special air service. So if you haven't watched SAS Grog Heroes, I'd highly recommend it. It's not 100% historically accurate, but it gives you the idea of the creation of the SAS and sort of the issues that some of them faced um, and the sort of building of the SAS. So it's really, really cool series. So as you can see, I'm painting this uniform for the desert. So I'm using Vallejo or wood for that one. Any sort of similar deserty color you could use like Iraqi sand it's a bit of a brighter color though so I probably would avoid that if you can um, but yeah old wood's good for this and then for the beret it's like a sandy color I thought khaki from Vallejo was actually a really good color for this because it's a bit more of a darky or a darker <laughs> sorry yellow um, or sand color so again use whatever color you've got in your range of paints but I think khaki is pretty good. I know some other khakis are a bit more on the grey side, but the khaki that I've got is a bit more on the sandy colour, so it worked well for this model. Now, for uh, his webbing, I'm going to go with Russian uniform. You could use a sand colour for this, but I didn't want it all to blow out. This is a 172 scale uh, miniature, or 20mm miniature, so if I start painting his webbing in a sand colour, it's just going to blend in with the uniform and you're really not going to make it out. Uh, so it might not be 100% historically accurate, but I'm trying to keep uh, trying to keep it so you can actually see what I'm painting. Now you can see I'm just taking my time here. The more you take your time during this phase of the painting, the more, or oh sorry, the less work you're going to have to do on the cleanup stage. And then because he's got a captured MP40, from a German, I'm painting his strap in German field grey World War II or the MP40 strap. If you're unfamiliar with who makes this model, uh, it's in uh, the title of the video, but I've also left a link to their website in the description. Please check out my other videos on these models, they are fantastic. They are without a doubt the best 20mm models you can get and potentially the best models you can get in this historical range in my opinion the detail is phenomenal now for his little pistol or revolver i'm painting it with a wooden handle so i'm using flat earth for that one again any sort of brown flat earth is a bit more on the lighter brown color i think it works really well for wood we can brighten it up later on um, but just even if you wanted just to give it a wash and put flat over earth back over the top of it that also works really well just be careful take your time don't rush any of these processes right now i'm giving his uniform a wash of one bar wash now the thing to take note here is i've actually watered down the wash a touch so when I say a touch, I mean I put a little bit of water on my brush and then I've just gone in and grabbed the umbar wash. So I'm really not doing a super dark wash on this, just, just a little uh, little wash or a lighter wash of that umbar. Now this is the fun part, or oh, some might say, some might absolutely disagree with me, but we're going back over the uniform in old wood. So that wash is going to pick out some of the details and now we're going to brighten up some of the other parts that might have got a bit darker. So I've zoomed in a bit here so you can hopefully see what I'm doing here. I'm capturing any of the details that I can see, so the pocket, um, bits of his shirt, uh, any crease lines, etc. Use a fine brush for this, so I'm using the Abtai Long 502 brush. I think it's 5.0 is the size that I'm not 
brush savvy, so please correct me um, if I'm wrong here. These were part of the Abtai Lung uh, 502 paintbrush set. Really good set for beginners um, or somebody like myself that's been painting for a while. However, um, after a few models, I noticed this tip started to um, fray a little bit. So it's a good set with the carrier, but uh, it might be worth investing in some better brushes to replace the brushes once they go. So you can see I'm just capturing all the details here, just making sure I'm getting all the crease lines in his trousers, but leaving some of that dark color where the folds um, aren't, just so it gives it a bit more depth. Now I'm going over the uniform, uh, sorry, the webbing in Russian uniform World War II. Um, and it's the exact same process as what we just did before. So I'm making sure that I'm capturing any details that I can see. So the way the straps sort of meet, um, where there's buckles and different bits of webbing attaching to his uh, straps. Uh, the water bottle, the little bits of straps that are just hanging loose. Uh, if he had gaiters, which I think this guy does, I'd be painting those as well. Um, and if he had a English rifle, for example, you could also paint the strap on that in Russian uniform World War II. Um, or you could use a sandier colour if you're trying to portray the desert like I am with these guys. It's really your call on that one. Again, using that small brush, the very fine brush, just to make sure I'm getting the details. Going back over his beret with khaki because I also washed that with the umbar wash and I'm sort of just dragging my brush around and just scratching away, picking out the details where I can um, and just trying to leave little bumps and grooves here and there because a beret is not going to be just flat on the person's head. It's made of the, the wall material so it's just going to be bent in places sort of caved in on itself bulging out in other places maybe where his hair's a bit thicker or if he's got a big melon like myself um you yeah it, you just gotta use your imagination and find the details the fantastic thing about ab figures are the details are already there for you so you don't really have to do too much work there and then going over the strap so just making any grooves where the strap's sort of caving in on itself um, making sure you're picking out the highlights but where it's folded in on itself I'm going to leave it dark or where it's almost touching his uniform where the eye can't really see I can just leave that bit in that dark washed um, German field grey colour that we've just applied prior to doing this. So going back over the uh, pistol with flat earth so this process is just exactly the same as what we did before this whole process since we've done the wash we're just going back over but we're picking out the details so the great thing about this is if you're new to the hobby um, you can just do all of these steps and just leave it you won't have to do anything else which i'm showing you here so i haven't done the metal but you can leave this model as it is now and it will look fine on the tabletop in fact it will look really good so you know i go a bit overkill and try and put more detail in with highlights but you can just leave it here and you'll be more than happy. We've used very little paint to achieve this as well. So now for the metal, I'm using German grey. If you wanted to save yourself some time and you wanted to save yourself some money, you could go straight into a silver colour, like a gunmetal silver, um, and just paint the whole thing in there. But for me, when you look at World War II guns in particular, a lot of them are quite black or dark, uh, and it's only on certain light you see a little bit of silver and you've got to remember these weapons would have been worn so they're going to be darker they're not going to be brand new polished weapons that are, are ready to be used they're going to be worn and torn and they're going to be dark as well also paint his boots in that german gray now this is a bit overkill if you don't want to do this that's fine but to capture the detail of the beret uh, a band that goes around the top or oh, sorry the bottom of the beret um, where it meets its head. I'm just painting that band in black. There's no further highlights that you need to do here, no washes. As long as you just take your time and be very gentle because you've already given um, the beret a bit of a highlight with the original khaki colour so you don't really want to make too many mistakes if you can help it. Now for those metal objects and his boots I'm using black wash just to again create some darker areas and we can go over them and highlight them 
later on if we so wish. But yeah, don't forget those boots. Um, it's very easy to forget the boots at this stage, especially when your mind's on other things. So now you can use base lead belcher from Citadel just to capture little highlights. So I've zoomed in here and you can see I'm not coating this MP40 in this silver color. I'm literally just getting little bits of lines here and there because I can guarantee that when you're looking at it from the tabletop, it's going to look fantastic. If you just coat it all in silver, it's really just going to look like a silver object. Um, and if you're interested in how I paint flesh, I've got a few videos on how I do that uh, with other AB figures for 172 scale models. Uh, so I'd highly recommend checking them out. I'll leave the links for those in the description. Also, don't forget any of the little um, bits of his strap that meet the gun to hit them with a little bit of this silver as well. You don't have to use Citadel Silver. There's Army Painter and Vallejo Rangers, etc. that you can use. Now, I noticed he had a tiny little um, button on one of his bits of webbing. So I'm just hitting that with a bit of gold. Ordinarily, I'd probably use copper for this, but because of the scale, gold stands out a bit more, but it's pretty hard to see. So if you wanted to leave it there, that's your model done. Um, obviously you guys weren't around for the flesh, but everything else was done in house. I didn't paint the water bottle in this tutorial, unfortunately, that's just English uniform uh, to paint that. But yeah, this is it, it's done. That's so simple. We used probably about 10 paints and it's all done. Uh, so you can just leave it there, but you know me, I've got to go harder. So I'm gonna do a final highlight of the uniform and I'm using medium gray to achieve this. And I'm just picking the very fine details that you can see. So the creases, the very tops of the crease of his trouser. I don't want to smother this on. I want to go light here. Uh, it's just to highlight these bits. If I put too much on, it's just going to blow out and it's just going to look silly. It's not going to look nice. And this is a technique you'll learn over time. I've still not mastered it. I'm nowhere near a professional painter in my opinion. So this is just stuff I've learned by watching people like me on YouTube. Um, so hopefully you might learn a thing or two from me um, but yeah don't you don't have to follow me exactly because yeah I'm definitely no professional painter you can probably tell that by when I'm always umming and ahhing or I don't know the correct term for a painting step I sort of just wing it majority of the time all right so now I use a Russian uniform in Iraqi sand a one-to-one -one ratio so just a blob of Russian uniform a blob of Iraqi sand Mix those two together and you've got your highlight co color for your webbing. So it's important here just to make sure you're picking out bits of the webbing. Like I said, the straps where there's buckles, where bits of webbing meet the straps, um, where his gaiters are, he might have little buckles on those. I'd pick those out too. As I said previously, if he had a English or a British uh, weapon, I'd be potentially painting his rifle strap in this color and highlighting it with this color also. Um, yeah, just take your time. It's really simple. If you've got a fine brush and a steady hand, you can achieve this. If you haven't, well, we've already got to the step before this where you can just leave it and say, you know what, I'm done here. You see I'm just putting little lines here and there just to make it stand out a bit but that's it. And then to highlight the pistol I'm using Vallejo Orange Brown and just doing a little line just so you can see ah that's a pistol grip. Uh, it's just that, that simple guys it really is. And there we go so here are the three miniatures that I've completed obviously the one that you've seen today and two others I've done uh, previously. It's super easy to do this paint range that I used was all Vallejo apart from the silver very minimal so I was only using like I don't know all up maybe 15 paints um, but if you discount what I highlighted with you know you only have to spend maybe 50 bucks Australian to get yourself the paints required to paint these SAS guys and to make them look really good on the tabletop let me know below if you think um, that how I painted these is is good uh, if, you, if you're going to be using it um, and if you enjoyed this tutorial, um, if you're new here, please like and subscribe. It really helps. And yeah, what AB figure would you like to see painted next? Let me know. But other than that, I'll stop rambling on and I will catch you guys at the next one.
Thanks.